I'm going to show you a great new feature in Data Abstract 7 that allows you to create the table definitions used for DA link right from a schema file. This is a very useful feature. I'm going to go ahead and run our new project wizard here. This works with both Oxygen for .NET and Visual C Sharp. We're going to use the WPF application template. Now I'm going to create a new custom data abstract server and client both, but what I'm showing here will actually work with any type of client or server configuration here. We're going to use the PC Trade Firebird database. And this has enumerated all the tables for me in the server, but I'm going to leave out the suppliers table just to show you how easy it is to add it back in. And just for simplicity's sake for our demo, I'm going to remove the login service. So there we go. You've probably done this before, created an application. Let's go ahead and run it, though. I'm going to start the server here. And there's the server running. And on the client, we're going to add a grid on the main window. So just come here and add a data grid. And let's give the grid a name and add a event handler for loaded. So we're going to use DA link here to load some data into our grid. So there we go, we're just going to load the clients table in from the middle tier and display it in our grid. And now we can go ahead and run this. And there we go, we see the clients table has been displayed here for us. Now in the real world, our applications are never quite this simple, right? So works great for a demo, but what do I do when I want to modify this the way it works? Oh, well, that's where this feature comes in. So now we're just going to stop our server here. And if we go into our server, we have this DA schema file here that we can double click on and it opens it up in Schema Modeler 7. So now I'm going to add that table back in, suppliers, just drag it over here and drop it in there. And there's our suppliers table. And I'm going to modify our clients table. And I'm going to do a simple modification here of just renaming the fields. But if you've used Schema Modeler before, you know that it gives you a wide variety of options for changing the way that your data is represented and restricting the way that your applications can access the data from the server. So we're going to come in here to our inner base statement and we're going to update this to change it from the old names to the new names. Now it's all correct. Since this is modified, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And this is saved back to our schema file. So now if we run our server again, the server is going to be running with the new schema information in it. But if we run our client application, it of course won't work because it's still referencing the old client name here. Okay, So we're not getting a compile error because the table definitions were built with the old version of the schema. Now there's two ways to update this. The first way is let's say we're working on the server and we want to create a new client maybe, we can come in here and right click on this and say create DA link table definition. So this is the schema mod file in the server. And all we have to do is specify where we want the table definition stored. So this is going to put it in our client application and update the existing table definitions. And we specify what namespace we want. Notice it added the suppliers table, which we just added to the schema. The other way is via this new file that was added here in the client application, the DA remote schema file. The DA remote schema file points to the schema in the middle tier. So if I right click on this and say create DA link table definition, it comes up and asks us how we want to connect to it. So this is my middle tier that is running. And if I hit next, it will connect to that middle tier to get the schema information. A couple things I want to point out here. We can change what service we're using. And if we were using a login service, we can specify that login service here along with a username and password. And then we have the option of storing the encrypted login parameters in a dot user file here. So that way you can restrict that that's not checked into your source control, for example, and just keep those settings local for your convenience. So now we've connected to that middle tier 
And here is that new suppliers table that's been added, also enumerated. So we're gonna go ahead and hit finish. And here is our table definitions that were regenerated. Now notice that the clients tables have all been renamed like we'd expect. And when we go back into our source code for our main window, it is giving us an error message now because that is incorrect. So let's go ahead and fix that. And we'll run our client application again. There we go, it's now updated using the new table definitions. Now this is a really simple demo, but hopefully you see the power of being able to regenerate those table definitions based on changes in your schema. This is gonna to totally change your workflow in working with DA link applications. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this works in a relativity client. New project, and we'll do the wizard again for relativity server client. So I've got my relativity server running locally here and select our domain and provide the username and password. And we're gonna go ahead and select all those tables and hit finish. So this has generated a client for our relativity server. So now instead of a DA remote schema, we have a relativity client file. And this relativity client file acts the same way. If I double click it and then provide the administrative credentials, this gives me an ability to browse the schema on the server right from the client application. And then we can right click and choose create DA link table definitions to update our table definitions. So again, it is connecting to our server and we provide the password here. And this time we're gonna store that in the .user file. And it gives us the option to select which tables we want to include. So very easy to update our table definitions that we use for DA link as the schema changes on the server. Very powerful, sure to have a positive impact on your workflow when creating data abstract applications. This feature was added in data abstract seven I am running the latest beta, so if you're not on the beta, some things might look a little differently. Of course, you're more than welcome to update to the beta as well.